Welcome to the Chaos Sector, we return to the Matrix. Before we get started though, there's something we have to address. We've been informed that viewers have not been pleased with our current reporting. They even mention how there has been a significant drop in subscribers since we quote, switched content styles. Well, that's interesting because this means you're keeping track of our subscriber count. For what reason? Does it determine why you, yes you, are subscribed? And second, you might want to know what you're talking about. We haven't switched content styles. We have no content style other than truth being exposed. You are what we call a straggler on YouTube. You came along because someone told you to visit the chaos. Your instincts didn't bring you here. In some cases, there's nothing wrong with being referred to a channel, but there's a difference, of course. Just flocking to what's popular, but no real interest in what content creators share has no value. I mean, you wouldn't have viewed content from the chaos sector if it weren't for our investigative reports on the Brian Koberger case. So you're only subscribing based on that content? In the Matrix, there are shapeshifters, right? They appear to be regular people, but if you look away for a split second, guess what appears? That's right, an agent. In other words, those who have unsubscribed were not genuine subscribers in the first place. Now one would say, oh wait, that content brought a huge percentage of your subscribers. So don't you think you should show appreciation by giving them what they want? We did give them what they want, an entire series of investigating the case, not only the initial series, but came back with an additional series to conclude our investigation. And that work, yes work, was almost two years of covering that case. I mean, what else do you want? The trial is being delayed because channels like the Chaos Sector investigated, found oddities, came to a conclusion he had been framed, others had also exposed it, and now the court can't truly move forward because the prosecution is stuck without any evidence against him. And they are trying to sweep the trial under the rug now, but initially it was one of the biggest cases in the nation not too long ago. So, you know, the true crime community can continue harboring over it, but we choose not to keep going through that revolving door. There are many issues to address which you should appreciate. Society, politics, technology, global issues. I mean, don't you think this is valuable content? Don't you think that's worth subscribing to? Well, if you're not a truth seeker, then your attention span towards that content is very low. No offense, but you're proving that. The chaos sector is not a true crime channel. I think we expressed that enough in the past. If that's all you care about, then by all means, follow that interest. Trust me, subscribers don't equate to credibility, something you need to understand. Those who seek truth will remain. So 100 subscribers who genuinely care about truth is appreciated far more than 1,000 subscribers who have no real appreciation for the creator's overall content. In other words, a hard-earned penny has more value than undeserved millions. In other words, a channel with over 500,000 subscribers may not have the same impact as a channel with only 500 subscribers. In other words, don't look at one's subscription count to determine their impact. In other words, the chaos sector is not a popular channel because of the truth. In other words, the chaos sector is perfectly fine with those loyal subscribers because we know they're unplugged in the matrix or those trying to unplug seeking the truth. And yes, don't think we aren't aware that the thousands of subscribers came about during our investigation in the Idaho murders case. We know that and we appreciate the genuine subscribers, even if they were referred to the channel by others. If they choose to stick around, then that's great. If they choose to drop off, well, they'd miss out on great content, content that helps them maneuver through the matrix. Some are afraid of truth, just like the matrix. When you awaken, there is no turning back and people are afraid to leave the life of fantasy because the truth can be frightening to them. Okay, with that being said, let's expose more truth in the political matrix. MSNBC's Alex Witt and Old Slick Back, or Al Sharpton, has a segment regarding recent comments from the Orange Puppet. I think you know how this will go. Well, joining me now, our good friend, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. As usual, my friend, in your car, getting ready to come to work. But we're glad to see you, Rev. Look, that comment about black jobs from Trump, it's got a lot of people talking. Then, by the way, the guy goes and doubles down at his rally on Friday in Virginia. I mean, take a listen to this. Again, here it is. They're taking the 
black jobs, people that have had their jobs for a long time are losing their jobs, and Hispanic jobs, people that have had them for a long time, they're losing their jobs. And you know who else is the biggest loser? Is going to be the unions. Um, what is Trump inferring there? He's inferring that they're taking black jobs. I mean, what else was he supposed to say? He could have said African-American jobs. And to be honest, that would have been more politically correct, at least. But nevertheless, if black people are losing jobs as people are taking those jobs from them, how else could he distinguish who exactly is losing those? Uh, you know what? Let's continue. It is the most racist statement that he's made in the last three days, because he's made them a long time before that. You've got to remember, Donald Trump said black jobs, and he talks about how blacks relate to him because of his mugshot. So he has criminalized blacks, saying that we relate to mugshots because we are innately criminal. Incorrect. He didn't say that. Where are the fact checkers when you need them? He stated that the black population embraced that mugshot, and they were even selling shirts with the mugshot. He never said that black people identified with him because he had a mugshot, which would infer that he thinks that most black people are criminals. We've all seen the mugshot, and you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts, and they sell them for $19 a piece. It's pretty amazing. It's a wording game. Embracing and identifying could be seen as the same, but they could be totally different in context. Embracing could mean that he's seen as the bad guy, the rebel in politics, while identifying could mean he is assuming the black community embraces him based on relativity of the mugshot. And since we presented the actual clip, it's simply him going based on what he discovered. And this is what old Slickback is trying to project onto Trump. People were wearing those shirts, and even Charles Barkley went on Gail King's show threatening to punch people in the face who wore the shirts. So obviously, if he's threatening to punch people in the face for wearing the shirt, uh, clearly people, that being black people, embraced Trump's mugshot. That's just the facts. And he only responded to that embrace, well, because that's what he was informed about. As always, in the political matrix, we do the whole switcheroony. If it were old Joe who said the exact same thing, the mainstream media would have swept it under the rug, as always. And the black community has always embraced Trump. From Hollywood celebrities, rappers, athletes, even from other countries, we've all seen the photos of them with Trump. He has always been a product of the American dream, a wealthy businessman who also had a cool factor to him, a public figure who loved to have fun. Most Americans embrace Trump before he became an unhinged politician. Most Americans, and especially the black community, are not the ones calling him racist, it's the mainstream media and Democrats. And that's why you have race baiters such as old slick back spewing the propaganda. But like mentioned before, it's all one big echo chamber. And also I noticed they didn't mention he stated Hispanics are losing their jobs as well. Did the Hispanic community think it was racist for Trump to call them, get this, Hispanics? Even though, yes, we have fought criminal justice system unfairly, he's always been on the other side, like what he did with the Central Park case. But what he won't discuss here is the people prosecuting him in New York and Georgia are black prosecutors that we voted to get in office. So that's not the system. It's those of us that rebelled against the system and got black prosecutors in. Now he uh, tries to say black jobs. What jobs are black? What are the kind of jobs that migrants, illegal migrants, are getting here? Mostly jobs that most American citizens, including blacks, were not trying to do. Nice try, but we're slicker than your perm, old man. Don't isolate blacks from the entirety of the speech during the rally. He's claiming that illegal immigrants are taking jobs from blacks and Hispanics. And guess what? It is happening. Companies are hiring illegal immigrants. It's been documented. There was a raid of many 7-Elevens where they discovered that the company was hiring illegal immigrants. Oh yes, we have the receipts, and it's from the District of New York United States Attorney's Office. Eight men and one woman from Long Island, New York, were charged with conspiring to commit wire fraud, stealing identities, and concealing and harboring illegal immigrants employed at 7-Eleven franchise stores located in Long Island and Virginia. Through their scheme, the defendants who owned, managed, and controlled 14 7-Eleven franchise stores during the course of the conspiracies 
allegedly hired dozens of illegal immigrants, equipped them with more than 20 identities stolen from U.S. citizens, housed them at residences owned by the defendants, and stole substantial portions of their wages. Now, the alleged claim had been confirmed. Now, this is just one business that has committed these crimes. There are tons more. The key to this crime is the element of stealing identities, and some stole identities of deceased citizens as well. Doesn't that sound familiar? It happens in voting as well. So they literally are stealing jobs from Blacks and Hispanics. Because if you factor in the location of a lot of these businesses, the demographics are in fact Blacks or Hispanics. And we can go even further, as illegal immigrants not only are benefiting from government assistance, while citizens have to jump through hurdles to receive it, they also have access to voter registration forms to migrants without requiring proof of citizenship, really? So an illegal immigrant and or non-citizens can receive government assistance, but also has access to voter registration forms. But you know, we're all human beings, right? Yet, what's the point of having a nation of laws if you don't enforce them? See, the problem is they know most people don't research anything. They don't fact check. They don't hold them accountable for what they claim. The mainstream media's job is to mudsling against their political opponents. It doesn't matter if it's conjecture, flat out lies, misinformation, disinformation. It doesn't matter because it's an echo chamber without the opposition there to challenge them. Anywho, let's continue. And uh, maybe somebody ought to tell Mr. Trump that this is the 21st century. We have blacks now that are CEOs in major corporations. We have black billionaires all the way down to people that work every day uh, in, in labor jobs that, that are, 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 are everyday jobs. But a black job has never been monolithic since slavery or at least since Jim Crow. So it shows you the mentality of Donald Trump when it comes to blacks. We're either... Not uh, uh, legal because we're criminals. We like mugshots. Or we do labor that uh, migrants can come in and take over right away. Both of them are absolutely offended racially, which is why as much as I was concerned about uh, 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 Joe Biden performance the other night, I was very upset when one or two questions, he seemed to not be able to get to his answer. I'm more concerned about all the things Donald Trump did answer. Hmm. And let's let's get to Biden's lackluster performance during the debate. Yes. Before we get into more shuffling of the feet regarding old Joe, let's do a reality check in the matrix. Now, old Slickback claims that illegal immigrants and immigrants are not taking jobs from blacks and Hispanics. We provided evidence that illegal immigrants are in fact taking jobs from blacks and Hispanics because they are working in a country without citizenship nor residency, permits, nothing. So by default, Regardless of race, they are taking jobs from citizens. But since this is the political matrix, and both sides are centered around race, illegal immigrants being hired are taking jobs from blacks and Hispanics. It's a fact. It still happens to this day. And since the government has flipped the script, even more companies are doing this, and there are no more raids happening. Second, when he stated black jobs, it wasn't a phrase exclusive to blacks. Old Slickback knew very well what he meant. He's discussing the issue of illegal immigration in the country and how they take jobs from blacks and Hispanics. And in his way of speaking, he just said black and Hispanic jobs. Old Slickback is literally grasping for straws on that one. Also, also he mentioned how illegal immigrants, yes, he stated illegal immigrants were getting jobs that most American citizens, including blacks, were not trying to do. Let's play that segment again. What jobs are black? What are the kind of jobs that migrants, illegal migrants, are getting here? Mostly jobs that most American citizens, including black, 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 black were not, we're trying, not trying, to trying to do. So let's play a game called uh, You Freaking Hypocrite. So it's a problem if Trump says black jobs in the context that you frame it, yet you can claim that illegal immigrants are doing jobs that American citizens, including blacks, won't do. So are those illegal immigrant jobs? You're basically stating that they are known for working those jobs, right? Even in your attempts to attack Trump, you shoot yourself in the foot without even realizing it. Because you know it's got many Democrats. It's got a couple major newspaper editorials calling on him to step aside. You're familiar with the campaign. And before I ask this question, let me just say I've been asking it in the two and a half hours preceding our conversation that I've been on the air. And not a one has said that it's likely he will step aside. Do you join that group? Do you think he should not step aside? 
I think that uh, uh, he certainly, uh, unless there's some things that we don't know health-wise, and I don't believe there are, should not step aside, and he should not be forced to step aside because he had a bad debate. I ran in 2024. People have bad debates. Uh, I think that it was alarming, but I don't think it was disqualifying. I just flew back into New York. I preached this morning at, at, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is in North Carolina. Those people in that church are not uh, talking uh, to me when we were in and out about Joe Biden or the pullout. They were more offended on, on uh, Donald Trump acting like every problem in America is because the migrants came across the border. Oh, so when you are dealing with addressing a pandemic that he mishandled, the migrants caused that? The people that died because of his mishandling, the migrants caused that? Let's really put this insanity into perspective. What we will do is combine segments of the conversation to form a response. The question, do you think Bernie Lomax should not step aside after his performance? Do you join that group? Do you think he should not step aside? As much as I was concerned about uh, 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 Joe Biden's performance of the night, I was uh, uh, very upset with one or two questions. He seemed to not be able to get to his answer. Uh, maybe somebody ought to tell Mr. Trump that this is the 21st century. Uh, 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 I think that uh, uh, he certainly uh, think that uh, he. I just flew back into New York. I preached uh, unless there's some things that we don't know health wise. Uh, talking uh, to me when we were in and out about Joe Biden or the pullout, they were more offended on, on uh, things. Donald Trump acting like every problem in America is because the migrants came across the border. Those of us that rebelled against the system, even though, yes, we have fought the criminal justice system unfairly. Uh, maybe, uh, so when you are dealing with addressing a pandemic that he mishandled, the migrants caused that? The people that died because of his mishandling, the migrants caused that? Do we have a problem at the border? Absolutely. The migrants caused that? Certainly. Yes, even even though, Even though uh, uh, maybe uh, the, people the people that died, that died but we can't we blame can't everything blame that came across the border with record unemployment under Donald Trump. Trump, Trump the migrants Trump caused that? Generally, generally and black unemployment was not, was not caused by, by the explosion, explosion at the border. It was explosion when his administration would not let Dr. Fauci and other people do what needed to be done in a timely way. Yep, that's always the response to that question. It ventures off into talking about Trump somehow. You're being asked about a man who has been suffering from dementia and other mental and physical ailments throughout his administration. That is the issue. Stay on topic. And when he finally answered, it was the biggest load of cow dung ever. Be bold. Why don't you? Just come out and say he needs to step down. Other Democrats have done it. Why so scared? Okay, which begs this question then, because recent NBC News polling shows 87% of black voters backed President Biden in 2020. That uh, fact check, 87% of black voters backed Democrats, not Bernie Lomax. Support has slipped now to 71%. Why is the president losing the support of black voters? Do you believe those poll numbers? I don't believe those poll numbers, and I think that those poll numbers will change. The more uh, blacks start hearing about black jobs, the more they understand Donald Trump's record. Let me explain something to you. You know that I've been involved on the front lines for decades, and particularly in New York, his hometown. Donald Trump has never supported blacks in a fight against criminal justice. He was always on the other side. Okay, it's official. They all have some kind of neurological disorder. The question was about the decrease in support for Bernie Lomax in the black community. Why in the hell do you keep talking about the opposition? This is not that complicated. Even on a fundamental level, you can go without mentioning Trump. The orange puppet must give them nightmares or something, because they always revert back to mentioning him when asked about Bernie Lomax. He called for the execution of five innocent young black and brown men. So people are not going to be fooled once the message is out there. And I think, again, you can look at the polls in 2020. They were up and down about black voters. At the end of the day, how many black votes did he get? And he rolled out a bunch of black luminaries and black uh, 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 people that were in sports and all that. People are not going to get offended. I cannot tell you the amount of people that I know in National Action Network and our chapters around the country that were outright offended. I'm talking about even black Republicans when they said that blacks relate to my mugshot. One, because he's calling us criminals. And two, it's black DAs that's prosecuting him. Willis in Atlanta and Alvin Bragg in New York. What is he talking about? What are you doing? So old slick back claims he doesn't believe those poll numbers, then claims the poll numbers will change after some time. If you don't believe those are the accurate poll numbers, then just move on from it. If you claim the numbers will change, 
then you believe that's actually what has happened to the black support for Bernie Lomax. He's out of his mind, so far gone, that I think he doesn't even realize how insane he sounds. He goes into Trump attack mode to deflect from knowing that the viewers, who are mainly Democrats, also agree with that poll. And by mentioning Trump in association with the black community, old slick back is literally pleading with them to not support Trump in the election. It's not working, it hasn't worked. And if anything, the black support for Trump has grown during Bernie Lomax's administration, especially after the Walking Dead performance. And get this, if Democrats have called for Bernie to step down, what do you think the black community thinks of him? Old slick back, just, just give it up already, it's over. Yeah, um, well, please, that's rhetorical because I can't possibly answer that. Let me ask you this, though. Um, it, it has to be more from the Biden campaign than just saying Donald Trump doesn't work for you and here's why. Ah, uh, yes. It becomes difficult to stand on policies when you can't blame the orange puppet. Now you have to explain what policies does Bernie Lomax actually propose that benefits the black community. Democrats have been hiding behind him, thinking they can just call him racist 24-7 and they will gain votes. Sure, there are those diehard black voters who will vote Democrat till hell freezes over, which is not that far off, by the way. But it's those voters they need to motivate to support them. And the support dropping 10 percentage points and continues to drop shows that even some of the lifelong Democrats have wavered a bit. What is the message Joe Biden needs to deliver to black voters that will inspire them to stick with him? I think that you're right. I think he's uh, tried to deal with some of it the other night, uh, but it needs to be more concise and he needs more validators to do it. We have the lowest black unemployment uh, uh, numbers in the history of this country. We've never had black unemployment where it is now. Still higher than whites, but it's lower than it's ever been. When he talks about how he has given uh, more money, four times more money to HBCUs than Donald Trump tried to brag about what he did. When you deal with the wealth gap, between blacks and whites has narrowed under Joe Biden more than we've seen any president in the last few decades. When you look at the fact that black women and white women wealth gap is almost equal now, he has delivered in terms of real data stuff to the black community. It just needs to get out there. And if you compare that, let, let, let's remember. Uh, uh, First off, the claim about the lowest black unemployment rate under Bernie Lomax is severely misleading and technically a false statement. The public sector is the largest employer for black workers. Now what this means is there are more black people working for the government by population than in the private sector, from local, state, and federal government. Like mentioned, federal funding creates thousands of new jobs, which are, of course, local, state, and federal employment. These jobs are not, I repeat, not private sector jobs. In essence, they're included in the annual reports of employment rates, but they're not in the private sector. So they come and go, meaning millions of dollars can be funded for projects that hire thousands of people. But the next year or a few years later, those jobs don't exist anymore. In addition, the black community still hovers around 14% of the population, close to 50 million. So if we crunch the numbers, can we suggest that 70% of that 50 million work for local, state, and federal government? If there is this thing called systemic racism, institutional racism, all of the claims that the government is racist against black people, then why would local, state, and federal government jobs hire black people, which it's the majority of their employment by population? Okay, so we're getting to the bottom of these oddities. Second, the wealth gap is clearly a distorted statistical comparison, because what those surveys would do is compare the median household income of two adult whites with one black woman's median household income and claim there is income inequality. If you have two white parents who combined have a median household income of $120,000, how can you compare that to, say, a single black woman's median household income of about $50,000? You can't, but they do it anyway. In addition, the change is in fact due to a lot of black women, guess what, working for the government. They become mayors, Congress members, so their annual salaries overall will be closer to their counterparts. Yet, in all of what old Slick back claimed, he never mentioned anything about black men. Where is the closing of the wage gap between black men and white men, huh? Surely they've found success under Lomax's administration, right? 
Where are the black men who benefited from Bernie Lomax's policies? I think I see a connection here. Black women make up 90% of the black vote for Democrats and they also are the most successful in the black community? Hmm, someone has some explaining to do. When we talk about this, if you compare that to Donald Trump, don't ever forget the largest civil rights case in the last two decades was George Floyd. Donald Trump was president under George Floyd. Mm -hmm. He would not support the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He called the family, never said he denounced what happened to George. They felt that he wasn't listening to them. He was president then, and the only action he took was he went and had the Secret Service and security move protesters from in front of a church across the street from the White House. And rather than say we need to deal with police reform, he announced he denounced the marches and said if the looting starts, the shooting starts. He had every opportunity to show he understands blacks are paying with George Floyd, the highest profile case we've had in 20, 30 years. He was on the other side of that. Okay, Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, I thank you for our conversation. As always, my friend, you... Nothing but a bunch of blabbering. It's simple. MSNBC, CNN and the Democratic Party know that the time is ticking. See, now that Democrats have called for Bernie Lomax to step down, it forces everyone to address the concerns in an election year. There's nowhere to run to. Either he steps down as president, or he will fall on his face once again in the presidential debate. Bernie Lomax knows Trump has the advantage, and it will always show in his body language, his rebuttals, and even his policy proposals. You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip and you can't teach a dog new tricks. In other words, this is not back to the future, guys. Bernie Lomax is an 80-year-old. Think about that. Trump is just as old, but the difference is astonishing. Trump appears to be 20 years younger than Lomax, and that's an indication that he has good health. It's not just physical health, it's also mental health. And good health is very important because the vibrance and energy that he brings shows strength to not only the nation, but to foreign leaders, while Bernie Lomax struggles to walk. And let's think about one of the secret weapons Trump may bring up, the cocaine scandal in the White House. Oh yeah, the American people know it was Powder Nose who left those baggies, and with Trump exposing that in a debate, well, it takes a huge swipe at the character of Bernie and his administration. Remember, the Secret Service covered that up. And if you combine that scandal with the drug charges, the gun charges, and the foreign scandals with his son, well, another corrupt politician is exposed. It's a bit sad too, because an old man has to stand there and be eviscerated in front of the world. But hey, it's politics. Whoever enters the lion's den expect to get gobbled up. And this is why many Democrats are urging Lomax to step down. They see all of the attacks Trump has at his disposal. His cognitive decline, powder nose leaving cocaine baggies in the White House, which the DOJ covered up, the border crisis, illegal immigrants raping and murdering young girls, illegal immigrants stealing jobs from blacks and Hispanics, illegal immigrants included in the U.S. Census, drag queens having story time with children, Democratic mayors just nuking their own cities as a form of, quote, political activism, the economy, wars that were started under his administration, American soldiers that were killed who were abandoned, including civilians as well. I mean, he simply can't rebuttal all of these points. His only safety net is about Trump's convictions, rhetoric about racism, and rewinding back to 2020's pandemic, and of course the insurrection. And I guess he'll talk about Project 2025 as well. These all have rebuttals from Trump. It's not going to work this time around because it is starting to sound like he's whining, and Democrats as a whole for that matter. The mainstream media can't avoid the epic destruction that awaits them, and we will help them get there just a bit faster. This is the chaos sector, 